as a group, uh, the way they've supported one another, um, and to go undefeated, uh, win 11 SEC games and win the national championship and beat two fine teams in Notre Dame and Ohio State. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of that. And we, you know, a lot of guys, you know, played not – not absolutely 100% because we were pretty beat up, but showed a lot of guts and a lot of grit out there uh, in terms of the way they competed and the way they performed. Uh, I think it was a fantastic offensive performance by Mack and Smitty and uh, the whole group. The offensive line has done a great job all year long. So um, really just can't say enough and can't really put it into words in terms of how proud I am of this group, of this team, uh, because they are the ultimate team. Thank you. We'll take our first question from Dennis Dodd. Nick, congratulations. I know you don't like to compare teams, but both of your undefeated teams re really different offensively, at least, and probably defensively. I wonder if you could compare the two and, and what it's like now to have another undefeated team. Well, I, I think especially in this year um, with – all the disruptions, no spring practice, uh, really no summer uh, ball of all or any sort, uh, develop players, uh, no games where you could play other players and develop players on the team. Um, I think this is based on the circumstances. You know, this team has really accomplished a lot uh, to be able to do what they did. We have great leadership on this team, uh, really good players um, that are the best people on the team. And I think it's always fun to coach when the best players on your team are the best people. And um, the other undefeated team we had had great people and great players, and they were a great team too. I think ball has changed. It's a little more wide open, a little more spread. Um, and, and this team has adapted, and we've changed with it. Uh, our coaches did a, an out, outstanding job with this team all year long. Um, and I'm just proud of – uh, our whole organization and everybody who contributes to it for what we're able to accomplish. We'll take our next question from Lane Higgins. Congratulations, Coach Saban. Um, I wanted to ask about Smitty and Najee, who are two of your players that set single season records for receiving and rushing yards. And it seems like their performance this year is largely a product of kind of your uh, shift in offensive scheme um, in the last few years. So I was wondering if you could kind of explain how much of a difference you think your um, change in philosophy played in, you know, getting those two players to have the games that they did and the seasons that they did. Well, I, I think it had a significant difference. You know, we've gradually changed through the years um, to be more, spread oriented, but still keep pro style drop back concepts with, you know, our offense, legitimate play action passes. Um, so this whole sort of blend of all these things and creating balance to be able to run, make explosive plays uh, with play action passes that complement the runs and be able to throw RPOs to, um, you know, count people in the box a lot. We do a lot of RPOs tonight on a lot of those slants and glances and um, they had eight guys in the box or one more than we can block and uh, you're one-on-one -on -one with the corner. So uh, Mac does a great job of executing it. Uh, Smitty obviously had a great half um, and Nazi has played well all year long and had some tough yards to get out there tonight. We knew it would be tough running against these guys the way they play and we knew we'd have to throw the ball to win and we did it effectively. We'll go next to John Zenner. Uh, yeah, Nick, what kind of job did, did Sark do finding a way to get playmakers in position to, to, to always to make plays? Uh, it seemed like Smitty well, can always get a open. Fabulous job. Yeah, he's done a fabulous job all year long. Um, he's got a great plan, does a great job preparing the players. Um, and does a really good job of calling the game uh, and, you know, knows what the other team is doing uh, and knows how to attack it, knows where to put the players to put them in position to be able to make those plays against what the other team is doing. And, 
he's he just done a fantastic job this year. I can't even tell you, um, can't even put it into words what a great job he's done and how much confidence the players have, you know, in the plan and the execution. And, you know, he's really helped Mac as well, I think. Um, Mac, Mac had a phenomenal year. So um, our offense was really the key to the success of this team. We, we weren't, you know, we're, we're okay defensive team, not a great defensive team. We played well enough and got enough stops. Uh, but the offense was dynamic, and that what that's what made the difference. Take our next question from Michael Casagrande. Yeah, just wondering, you had a couple teams that um, 2016, 2018, that came close to winning, uh, going undefeated, finishing the job. This team actually did it. What's what's the legacy do you think of this team uh, that was able to finish the the undefeated season? Well, you know, to me, this team accomplished more almost than any team. No disrespect to any other teams that we had or any championship teams, but this team won 11 SEC games. No other team has done that. Uh, they won the SEC and went undefeated in the SEC. Uh, and then they beat two great teams in the playoffs with no break in between. You know, this is our fifth game in a row from LSU to Arkansas to Florida to Notre Dame to here. Um, and played 13 games and went undefeated with all the disruption that we had in this season. Uh, I think there's quite a bit to write about when it comes to a legacy of a team. Take our next question from Bill Bender. Uh, Coach, you touched on it, but, I mean, what does it mean, one, to have guys like Mac, Jalen, uh, even Landon at the end got through the injuries you were out in a the second part for you were asked about Bear Bryant afterward I mean what does it mean to you to continually be compared to a coach with his legacy well I, I don't think anybody really compared to coach Bryant um, you know in the era that he coached and the era that he won you know he won a lot of different ways you know he won throwing it he won running a wishbone he run it one at running conventional, you know, offensive formations and, you know, his legacy lasted, you know, over a long, long period of time. And, um, you know, we all have to adjust with the times. Obviously things are a little different now. Uh, the challenges are a little bit different with this, you know, the spread offense and, uh, the things that make it more difficult, I think, to play good defense in this day and age. But I think coach Bryant is, you know, sort of a class of his own in terms of what he was able to accomplish, what his record is, and the longevity that he had, uh, and the tradition that he established. If it wasn't for Coach Bryant, we, we would never be able to do what we did. Uh, I mean, he's the one that made Alabama and the tradition in Alabama a place where lots of players wanted to come, and we've been able to build on that with great support. Uh, and his family has always supported us in in a tremendous way. Uh, that has helped us have the success that we have. But that tradition that he established, that's a big part of that. Take our next question from Andrea Adelson. Nick, as a follow-up to that and some of the stuff you've already oh, talked I can't about. hear. Andrea, we can't hear you. So let's get that fixed and we will transition to Mike Rodak. Nick, how difficult was it for to see Devontae go down in, in the second half there just after the season that he's had? And just how was he doing as far as his hand after the game? Well, you know, he did really dislocated his finger. Um, and, you know, I told somebody after the game, I said, you're the only player that I know that missed a whole half because of your finger. Just kidding. But uh, they couldn't get it to – it was dislocated and they couldn't get it back in. And if that had got it back in, he, he would have been fine. And he actually wanted to win and play, and uh, we just didn't allow him to. But he's a great competitor. Uh, I heard somebody say he set some kind of record in the first half of the game. Um, heavens knows what he would have done if he had played the whole game. Uh, but, you know, you're talking about the ultimate warrior and the ultimate competitor. And, um, you know, 
I'm, I'm so happy for him that he was recognized as the best player in college football because I don't think anybody's done more for their team than he has for our team. Coach, thank you for your time tonight. We appreciate